Welcome to Health and Living with me, T. Xiao Eek. Now, it's hard for any of us to deal with an injury that limits our mobility, but if you're already a generally active person, it's even more difficult to temporarily reduce how much exercise you can do. So um, we kind of want to look at, um, you know, what happens when you have um, a knee surgery? Uh, how do you, uh, you know, uh, get through that? How do you recover after that together with consultant orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Ha- Singh, this will be the first of a three-part series where Dr. Haji will be joined by Jimmy, who has actually recently had um, knee injury and surgery. And so we want to get an insight perspective into what it's like to manage the injury and to recover from it. So in today's episode, we will discuss how, um, how common are knee injuries and what you can reasonably expect in the first two weeks of recovery after surgery. How are the, both of you today? Hi. I'm good. Uh, This is Jimmy here, feeling uh, much better uh, after I think about close to three weeks uh, after my surgery. It's just been three weeks. Okay, so um, let's hear from you first, Jimmy. Tell us exactly what happened. How did you get this injury? Uh, Well, I was uh, playing futsal uh, with my friends. This was uh, in August uh, last year. And I think this is quite common when uh, when, it, when it happens because everybody says, oh, did this happen? So I was playing futsal and nobody was around me. I was uh, I had the ball, I, I turned and there was a big snapping sound uh, and I just dropped to the ground and you know nobody even touched me. Um, and after that, it was major swelling uh, on, on my knee and I could not, uh, walk back to uh, well, I was riding my motorcycle. I could not walk back to my motorcycle, but being quite macho, and I, I actually rode back home with a swollen knee, thinking it was just a sprain. How bad was the pain? I, I've been through a lot of injuries while playing uh, a lot of football throughout the years. Uh, I'm already fifty this this year, so I, I I have quite a high tolerance of pain. But yeah, this one was like discomfort because I couldn't put any uh, weight uh, on it, so I was sort of like hobbling to get to grab my bag and get on the motorcycle. Uh, I'm just glad that I could still use my, 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 my right feet to uh, balance the bike and, and, and just get home. Okay. And before we talk about sort of what you did later on in terms of, you know, getting it checked out, what did you do in the immediate aftermath when you got home in the next couple of days, perhaps? Well, as with any sprain, uh, I, I basically, I, I, I stayed... Uh, just to try to get to reduce the the, the swelling, um, thinking that the next day I would go to a uh, 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 Chinese insei or a tita, just to get it sorted out, lah. Yeah, so I had to bear the, the, that 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 throbbing pain while it was like so uh, uh, swollen, and and which is what I did the next morning. I went to see the tita and to. It, you know, think to get it uh, sorted out just like that. All right. So, Dr. Hajit, you know, what, what do you think happened with Jimmy's uh, knee when he had that injury? He said he turned, he heard a snapping sound, and he just dropped to the ground. Um, what, what was going on there? Now, um, I mean, it seemingly looked like it was a bad injury from the word go. Um the mo- the motion that he probably describes uh, is what we call a pivoting kind of injury. That means uh, your foot is probably fixed and there's a rotation around the axis of the knee. And uh, simply said, the knee just gave way. And that was the pop that he probably heard. And uh, dramatically falling to the ground and probably the people around him also heard the pop. That's how they normally describe. Now, uh, what what I can add on is that bad knee injuries need not be uh, contact-based. Almost 70% of ligament or meniscal injuries at the knee, uh, sporting injuries at the knee, they occur with non-contact injury. That means you, 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 you twist and turn and you change position or 
you've gone uh, unchallenged and suddenly something happens and you get the injury. So these twisting kind of injuries are notorious to cause the, the kind of injury that he probably had. What exactly popped? Well, um, day in, day out, uh, when I used to teach students and even in practice and even when I was training, that pop, when you turn and twist, is probably the anterior cruciate ligament giving way. And dramatically, he explains that the knee got swollen very fast. That is another classical hallmark of a cruciate ligament injury because that ligament is very vascular, so it tends to bleed a lot in the joint. Now, comparing that to a injury of the meniscus, yes, you may feel a click or what sometimes um, is described as a, is, as a clunk or some twitch, but the swelling is not so bad. You, you tend to be able to hobble out of the, the field or the playing field. Uh, and the swelling develops over the first day. But the traumatic ones, the big pop, uh, the world seems to just give way under, under your knee and uh, everything is very dramatic. It's most likely the anterior cruciate ligament. Okay. And just a quick anatomy lesson. The difference between ACL and a meniscus, you know, what do they do in the joint? Yeah, so what... Okay, so just to put it simply is that... Uh, the knee is formed by your, the lower part of your thigh bone and the upper part of your shin bone. The knee joint then, the surfaces of the bone is covered by the cartilage. So if you are a meat eater and you eat your KFC drumstick, that white surface that, that caps the bone is your cartilage. Now, ligaments uh, hold the two bone, bony surfaces and they keep the joint functioning without giving way. Each ligament has a particular function. The anterior cruciate ligament stabilizes the knee for rotational movements. Now, uh, the meniscus is a cartilaginous uh, disc, which is actually between the two surfaces. So you have an inner meniscus, which is the medial meniscus, and the outer meniscus and these act as a shock absorbing uh, structure and they also make the joint congruent. So these are the three structures that potentially can get injured uh, during a twisting injury of the knee. So with these kinds of twisting injuries, does it have anything at all to do with how um, active uh, someone has been? Yeah, um, the way I look at it, if you are uh, well conditioned, uh, your muscle envelope works very, very well. Uh, your playing technique is extremely good. The, the chances of getting injured is always there, but it's at a reduced level. Uh, as we move on uh, forward in sporting and treating sporting injuries and preventive strategies, we find that even the muscles around the hip, lower back, and even the way you move around the knee and the ankle all play a part in prevention of injury. So you can have weakness of your hip musculature, uh, especially the gluteus muscle, and that can cause potential injuries or abnormal loading to the knee. So we now find that in, in rehabilitating injuries or after they have recovered and get back to sports, we always strengthen out all other joint group muscles so that we prevent a second injury. All right. So it's not just to do with the knee joint. We're looking at other... Yeah, yeah it's like um, a package. Mm. So Jimmy, you went to see a tita. Um, you know, tell us, uh, you know, how long did you take that approach for and at what point did you recognize that, you know, maybe uh, it was something more serious? Well, this tita, I've been... Mean, you know, going for various injuries before. So I, I kind of believe in, in you know, setting the bone right if it's if it's twisted. Um, so I think psychologically also, I, I, you know, I thought, okay, give it a rest, let the swelling reduce. Still thinking that it's such a, just a sprain, you know. I think it got, uh, the swelling had gone down probably after... Uh, 
like four, three to four weeks. Um, but I, I still felt that I need to strengthen it. So I, I started running uh, and jogging around the neighborhood. And it was okay. Um, uh, three, I think three months after the injury, um, I thought, okay, it's, uh, it's about time to kind of play uh, futsal again. Uh, so I, I felt confident enough because I was, I was running uh, uphill, down the hill. The warm-up, you know, made sure I warmed up and all that. Got onto the field. The first kick I took, I dropped to the ground. The knee just couldn't take the twisting action of, the, of, uh, of a kick. You know, it's not even a tackle. It's just me kicking the ball. The, the pressure of uh, me standing on the injured knee. That's when I thought, okay, this is not not right, uh, and I'd gone to uh, ask friends about it. You know, who can I see? So I had gone to see a uh, uh, physio uh, therapist uh, to kind of see what I can do, and that was uh, from August. That was in somewhere in November. All right. Yeah. And uh, from November, you were seeing a physiotherapist. And then what happened after that? Uh, so I think straight straight off, they did uh, the 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 test. I think it's called uh, Lemur, you know, where they they pull the the tibia off from the knee, and within five seconds, you know, uh, they they knew that there was problem with the ACL uh, because it had. Uh, I think it would it would come it came out. Just too obviously, you know, uh, the assistant's eyes popped out uh, when they saw, you know, physically uh, the tibia com- coming out from, uh, you know, so much away from the from the kneecap and said, okay, you know, you've got to go uh, to get an MRI scan just to confirm uh, that, that it's, uh, it's an ACL problem. All right. So, yeah, so that's what I did, what, go, went and did, you know, that, you know, within the week. Okay. Um, so what I want to ask you right now is, at that point, was surgery anywhere on your mind? I think I've, I'm still quite uh, active in, in, in sports. You know, I, I, I do play a lot of uh, futsal, uh, which led to the injury. So uh, I'm quite gung-ho about it. And I was like, you know, do whatever it needs to get fixed so that I can play again. Okay. Uh, I I do go uh, and 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 play, uh, uh, but uh, still play tournaments and with 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 my team uh, casually, maybe uh, two times a week. Yeah. So mm, so so in November when you went to see the physios and they said you know you have to get an MRI. At, at what point after that did uh, was surgery on the table and you decided to go ahead with it? Okay. So so right after. The, the MRI, you know, just confirmed that, you know, the ACL is fully torn. Uh, uh, my doctor said, you know, what do you want to do? You know, so you, if you want to play uh, games again, you know, uh, you have to do this uh, surgery. I mean, otherwise you can still exist. I mean, you know, walking and running straight is no, no, no problem. It's just the turns and the twists. So, so that's an option. So I, I want to play. So, uh, my my first thing in my mind is you know uh, when can we schedule in the surgery, you know and and I want uh, you know as as soon as you know tomorrow is it's it's okay you know um, and we are under you know the, the whole MCO and 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 EMCO and RMCO so I'm sort of like yeah I I can deal with working from home because we kind of used to it already. Uh, so I said, uh, let's let's do it, and and this this is the this is the twist, the whole thing. You know? said, okay, uh, are you on any medication? I said, well, I just had a stent uh, put in uh, like a month ago, and then that that was like a major hurdle to it um, because uh, I think from from my doc, uh, he said, you know, oh, you are on this blood thinner, so you can't. Do it. You have to consult your your cardiologist. So I I said okay, let me go and and, and do that. So I I was told I was supposed to wait for like ten months before I can go off my blood thinners. Uh, so that that was quite a bummer uh for me uh because I wanted to 
go and play my, my tournament, which is usually at the end of the year, so for the following, which is this 2021. Uh, so I wanted to go and do it right straight at the end of last year, you know. Uh, so I went to see my cardiologist and, and he said, you know, oh, no, you know, no, no way I can take you off uh, so soon after the surgery. You have to wait, you know. So uh, I did wait. Uh, after my six months, six months after my post op, which was uh, uh, I think end of May uh, last last month, I asked my cardiologist to give it a try. Say, you know, can I uh, go for my uh, ACL surgery? And then he looked at my my report, and I was doing well. My you know the stent was okay, and and all all the the blood reports and. Necessary reports were all right, so he he gave me the go ahead, and and straight away I I called my uh, surgeon and said you know let's let's do it as soon as we we can you know, and uh, everything was in 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 place you know I got uh, all my all the right letters to inform my surgeon to let's uh, plan the surgery. All right. Okay. So when we come back from the break, um, Dr. Hajit, I'd like to find out you know how often do you come across sort of patients who sort of take that course of action, right? They seek um, other uh, channels first. And how much um, does that impact on the outcomes of their, the surgery and their recovery if there's a longer and longer gap between the injury and uh, and seeking treatment? So I'm speaking today to consultant orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Hajit Singh, and Jimmy, who is a recent knee surgery patient um, and we are discussing uh, we're getting an inside look at um, you know what it's like to undergo knee surgery and um, you know what is the recovery uh, after the injury so stay tuned we'll be right back on BFM 89.9 welcome to health and living with me T Shao Ik I'm speaking today to Dr. Hajit Singh, consultant orthopedic surgeon, and Jimmy, a recent knee surgery patient. We are discussing recovery from a knee injury. This is the first of a three-part series, and uh, today we are looking at, well, uh, Jimmy has told us about how his knee injury came about. Um, it was a twisting injury, and uh, Hajit has already explained it. Actually, 70% of ligament or meniscal injuries um, at the knee are actually these kinds of uh, twisting injuries. They're non-contact injuries. Um, it sounds excruciating for me. Uh, and Jimmy has sort of walked us through what he did after that. He went to uh, seek complementary uh, medicine, his usual cause of action. You know, Jimmy, you did say that you thought it was just a sprain at first. And then later on, uh, you decided... Um, to go for surgery. Now, Dr. Hajit, you know, from what you see of your patients, um, is this a usual course of action? You know, the sensei, the tita, a physio first before, you know, you're, you sound like you're right at the end of the line. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to move up from right at the bottom to maybe somewhere in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere in the middle. <laughs> now, is, is it safe is what I'm wondering. Is it safe for people to wait and see, to try other methods first? Okay. Uh, okay. Now, I, I think from, from the outset, you can actually define the kind of injury that you have. Okay. If uh, you, you twist your knee and it, it just swells up like a ball, uh, you, you know that it's just not something simple. Uh, the second part is that if you have difficulty even putting your foot down because of pain, uh, we, we do know that this is just not possibly a, a simple muscle strain or a strain of the ligament. I, I think that's a safe way to look at it. Um, if you can't bend it comfortably to a safe range of movement, that's another red flag. And when you hear a pop or the knee just looks so different, then maybe, yes, go, go and get it looked at, at at a hospital or a clinic uh, from the word go. But having said that, a lot of my patients, they, uh, we are not the first go-to person. Uh, and, and we are uh, increasingly okay with that as long as things don't get worse. Now, if, if we look at how Jimmy had it, he, he self-treated. Uh, there was a traditional healer involved whom had, he has been going to for a period of time. 
and uh, increasingly even uh, traditional healers or sinses they they sometimes they look at the part and if it looks very very weird they do tell you to go straight to the doctor i i've seen that uh, around the area that i work in um then he felt well he, he could run so if if i look at it and and just give a summary it's going to be like possibly he ruptured his acl uh without much injury to the cartilage and the meniscus and over time he got better so he could run he could run up and down the hill okay uh comfortably so the anterior cruciate ligament comes into play when you are pivoting that means you are moving direction rapidly in football futsal bas- basketball squash badminton these are the predominant movements and if he had started with this from the word go he wouldn't have been able to do it now when he got back and tried to play again he f- he felt the knee give and he fell down again now the unfortunate thing is this when you have an unstable knee joint and the acl is torn the next time that you twist it again the meniscus has to take the function of the acl and then the meniscus will tear and the second injury will damage the cartilage even more so if you look it look at it in a very simplistic uh, form is that every time you have a give way you are damaging the knee more so having said that um that did prompt him to to look to to see his regular physio and the physio picked up that there was a bigger problem and he went on to a doctor and this is almost 70 to 80% of uh how these patients come to me so from the mm-hmm. bottom we are moving to middle <laughs> middle middle solution and does the time between the point of injury and treatment how, how much does that matter to you um if they are not doing those kinds of uh, uh high intensity sports that would cause further injury would that be okay then yeah i i i think that's a very good question and i probably could explain it in two scenarios scenario 1 is they avoid the the kind of uh, movements that potentially can cause uh, the need to give way and damage it further and they seemingly feel fine the caveat in that is that if you injured your acl and tore your meniscus during the first injury itself and you delay seeing a doctor and discussing options if there was a potential for the meniscus to be repaired it is best done within the first 2 to 3 weeks of injury after that the torn part hardens up it is more difficult to repair and often irreparable requiring removal of the torn part of the meniscus that's one but if we look at the flip side even when you come to us with a grossly swollen knee often i would we would examine you pick up the rupture of the ligament the anterior cruciate uh but we would actually tell you uh, you know the knee is very swollen we probably try to reduce this swelling with medication physio bracing the knee protecting it and we give it a bit of time possibly 2 weeks to settle down before we do surgery the reason and reasoning for that would be that when things are very swollen you are cause even surgery is causing a second injury to something that's already injured and your rehabilitation after surgery will be very rocky the chances of potentially having stiffness it's said to be a bit higher and your therapist would need to work so much harder and so would the patient um so there's two ways of looking at it there has been conditions where the acl is torn the meniscus is torn and has flipped badly therefore you can't straighten the knee at all so these are more emergent situations and even the knee is swollen i still go in and do the surgery because we are now stuck between uh, hard place and you know so we try yeah. to do the best 
but but we but we play out everything with the patient, so we know where that both of us are on the same book. Do you mean did you have concerns about undergoing the surgery? Um, actually, I think my surgeon was it gave me a lot of confidence. Just so happened that these were all kind of uh, uh, I I asked my friends, so they are kind of like my friends surgeon as 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 well uh i had i do have a lot of sporting friends and who have all gone through acl uh themselves uh, so so it was something someone that gave me comfort so it was not really an issue to say you know let, let let's go and do this and get it over and done with yeah mm, sure. I, I look forward to it all right so dr hajit um just very briefly can you walk us through what exactly is involved in the surgery what are you doing at that point. Okay. Um, for the anterior cruciate ligament, for knee surgeries, most of them are no longer done with uh, big cuts and big incisions. Uh, most of us uh, are able to do these surgeries arthroscopically, which is keyhole, camera-based surgeries. So essentially, we usually take... Uh, the tendons, whether it is the kneecap tendon or the hamstring tendon, and we use it to reconstruct the anterior cruciate ligament, which is ruptured. When we do surgeries using the camera and keyhole, we are also able to evaluate uh, any other concomitant injuries of the cartilage and meniscus, and we can address those injuries at the same time. So um, we tend to have a battle plan and we have all our options laid out and discussed with the patient. And when we do the arthroscopic evaluation, we know that, okay, additionally uh, to the ACL, we would need to either repair the meniscus, resect the meniscus, do certain procedures to the cartilage. And that then will change the amount of protection to the joint and rehabilitation process. So everything is done uh, at the same mm -hmm. time. Uh, so we've got a big battle plan, but the small changes are done during the surgery itself. Mm, all right. And generally, how complex is surgery like that? How long would it take? Treating the anterior cruciate ligament and meniscus issues usually takes about two hours, all in all. Okay. So I must say, by the way, Jimmy, you don't look like somebody who's just three weeks out of knee surgery and six months out of having had a stent put in. So tell us a little bit about post-surgery. Um, first of all, what exactly were your expectations um, coming out of surgery? What did you want to be able to do? Um, actually, before we go to post post surgery, um, the good thing about having delayed my ACL surgery was that I I continued on to do my physiotherapy uh, to build uh, and prepare the muscles for the surgery. Uh, so I I had gone on a lot of uh, hikes and also sessions at the physiotherapist. So. I, I, I was kind of well prepared uh, for it. I was uh, doing a, a lot of uh, leg exercises uh, to build the muscles to support uh, the surgery uh, thereafter. So right, I think right after the, the surgery, I was like kind of quite confident. I think within a week, uh, you know, I was uh, able to like move around uh, my my house. You know, go to the kitchen and prepare stuff. Uh, and I mean, usually I'm quite uh, independent and I don't really want to kind of impose on, you know, other people. Uh, so so I, I go and make a coffee by myself, yeah, I mean, even after a, a week uh, after. But there were, there were some uh, complications uh, with some pain at my, nearer to my ankle, if not at the... Uh, point of surgery i think it's it's more of like a blood flow issue and and it had something to do with the blood thinness which i uh took uh, uh continued after the the surgery again uh but that kind of settled down uh after a week and and i was uh, up and about regularly and 
moving instead of the back seat, I move from the front seat of the car when I go and visit my my doctors and the physicians. All right. Yeah. Okay. And and now three weeks post surgery, um, what is your progress like? What are you able to do now? Uh, well, I, I go I go to the physio. Uh, therapy three times a week, uh, and and I, I do for the other times I'm, I I I exercise at at home. It's basically just building the muscles, and and I'm supposed to uh, remind the muscles. Uh, you know, it's supposed to work. So I do a lot of exercises on on the quads uh, to strengthen the area, and I. Bought a, uh, a tens uh, machine to uh, kind of stimulate the the muscles to to make it work. So so I I I'm, I'm quite really I mean look forward to kind of playing sports again. You know, so I I I do anything. You know, if if uh, they tell me you know do this uh, two reps, I'll do four reps and yeah, very very okay. very very look forward to playing again. All right, yeah, that that's your incentive, um, Doctor Hajit. What Jimmy said about um, he had been uh, diligently doing physio before the surgery. Um, is that something you'd advise patients before undergoing surgery? And also, is there anything that patients shouldn't do before they go for surgery? Okay, now a lot. I mean, knee surgery is is not life uh, threatening surgery that has to be done immediately uh, upon getting the injury, like I explained earlier. And some of us do have to um, move around the logistics of work, the logistics of how we are going to handle things after surgery. So they need a bit of time. Uh, Prehab, that means pre-surgical rehabilitation to maintain uh, muscle structure so that you don't lose or weaken out the, the muscles too much. That means you start not at too low a base to build on after surgery is an excellent uh, idea uh, when one has the, the time and the patience to do that. Uh, so we I tend to get two groups of uh, patients. One that come to me with uh, anterior cruciate ligament injury, wasted muscles, um, and in those situations, I actually tell them that, you know, your muscles are now weak and wasted. Let's spend some time to build them up a bit before we do surgery. That's group one. Group two is probably somebody like Jimmy, athletic, having friends who have gone through the same process understands that surgery is not the end all and there's so much to do and starting as good as the knee can be before surgery helps. So these patients tend to come already prepared and well enough to just lock surgery. All right. And is there anything that they shouldn't do? Um, perhaps try to be even more macho do other things <laughs> that could cause further injury before they can even get into the OT with you, you know? Uh, I, I think they shouldn't They shouldn't play while waiting for, for surgery. But often I, I do find that that's a temptation. The younger um, patients have uh, difficulty staying away from. They, they end up going and watching their friends play and then they try and uh, play again or they get just a few minutes and they get injured again and that hastens their need for surgery. But on, on the flip side, even after surgery, um, you cannot be too gung-ho with rehabilitation. There are a certain reason why things are done in a particular way. There is also uh, the need for tissue to heal and settle down after surgery. So if you do too much of uh, movement, reps, beyond what's recommended, you tend to have a little bit more swelling, a little bit more discomfort. And while we think, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, no pain and there's no gain, uh, most of the time it's counterproductive because the, 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 the knee is swollen, the muscle envelope is sore, you tend to feel a little bit worse off at the end of physio. The next day, you tend to feel stiffer 
and when you go for your next session, it's difficult to restart at the same level or improve you. So it's like a vicious cycle. So sometimes when I have patients who are very gung-ho about rehab and I find them overdoing things, I tell them, hey, you know what, let's calm down a little bit, uh, take a chill pill, put on more ice to quieten things down, take some anti-inflammatories, then we restart again. It's all about uh, understanding the patient and what goes on within his mind. It is obvious that Mr. Jimmy is so wanting to get back to sports. So a lot of it is just getting him comfortable and you know everybody reads off from the same page, then everything is fine. All right. Okay. So typically, when can somebody like Jimmy get back to sports? Um, if we have operated on the anterior cruciate ligament with uh, meniscus therapy and some cartilage work, um, you are usually up on a cycler by the fourth week, jogging by the third month, but back to futsal approximately after about 10 months or so. All right. Although, How are you feeling about that, Jimmy? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, these I think it's been briefed by my physiotherapist and surgeon, so uh, I'm prepared to to wait. I, like I said, you know, I had a lot of friends who kind of gone through this, and they, there's the, the the good story and the bad story. Those who, you know, didn't follow up on the rehabs, or went to play back, you know, play too soon. And uh, you know, had their second ACL, uh, so uh, I don't want all that to happen. So I will follow, you know, uh, the, the experts, you know, uh, because I I want to play, you know. Yeah. Also, Doctor Harjit, I'm getting the sense there's a sort of like an epidemic of adult men, football and futsal playing men who tear their ACLs. Am I right? <laughs> No, once you're closer to 50, it's the new 20. Yes. <laughs> I've got no problem with that because I'm close to that age too. But having said that, uh, I mean, exercise and, and keeping healthy is, is going to bring you through the pandemic with uh, less mental issues. So I think there's, it's always been the goal to continue being active. And uh, in, in, in games like futsal and football, you, you it's also the camaraderie of playing with people, like-minded people, so it's always fun. Now, the other part of it is, yes, uh, we tend, I mean, not we, sorry, patients who are uh, the weekend warriors, the guys who are very active at the age of 20, now going 40 plus, 50, the intensity at, that, at, at which they play in tends to sometimes put them uh, in circumstances that they can get injured. But 95% um, of the time, those injuries are, are, are very trivial and uh, easily managed. Uh, it's only that 5% that you get a bad injury. All right. Now, Dr. Hajit, what if somebody doesn't want to undergo surgery, even though um, it's really something that would be the best course of action for them? Yeah. Um, ultimately, uh, the doctor's role is to put everything on the table and uh, offer what we think is best for, for, the, for the patient or person at that time. Um, I think it is important that if that person is not thinking of that best option, we should then still not just tell him, okay, that's the end of the consult and see you later or whatever. We, we need to then try and structure something around around it. You know, he can say no no to surgery, but we pick up the fact that the muscles around the knee are, you know, just not up to the mark. Uh, he's still very uncomfortable. Then possibly the use of uh, knee support for a short period of time, some physiotherapy, closer follow-up will make him feel better. Now, the proof is in the pudding. It's ultimately what that person is willing to forego in order to avoid surgery. If you end up like how Mr. Jimmy was initially, he said that, you know, I could run and I was fine and that is enough for this other patient, then they generally don't come back. But 
those who are we those who are active tend to try and push the envelope over time and that's when you get your second injury you worsen the the first injury and and you come back saying that hey you know you were actually right and let's get it done and i'm totally comfortable and happy to be proven wrong by a patient who's like able to curtail the amount of activity that he wants to do is happy with his new normal and he carries on life it's okay all right um perhaps a final message uh from each of you um because we will be continuing this conversation in the next um you know in the next part of this uh, three part series uh later on we'll be looking at the physio and the rehab part of things that the, the longer recovery process and uh, I'm sure it's not um, a bit of roses it can have its ups and downs so we'll explore that more in depth so at this point do you have a final message uh, Jimmy for our listeners um, just you know on what we've uh, discussed today sort of at the point of injury making that decision to go for surgery uh, something that you'd like to leave our listeners with I advise um, you know those who had injuries to uh, see. I mean, seek professional help. You know, uh, to so that you can make the the right decisions. Uh, you know, I I think um, one of the issues is you know I I, I went to see a friend uh, who who was an orthopedic surgeon, but uh, he he had not picked up on an, uh, the idea that I actually torn my ACL. You know, uh, he kind of like. Because he was a friend and he was kind of casual, so it was like you know, okay, bro, you know, take this, you you you'll be all right. So uh, I think if you if you can, yeah, seek professional help uh, and you know get it, uh, uh, make the right decisions. Uh, you know, I I wish I had the surgery right before my uh, angioplasty. You know, then right. I I would have been in my tenth month now. I, you know, this would be the, and playing futsal and already. Play, well, you know, it's MCO, so yeah, uh, I I would have been able to play uh, right at this moment. All right, Doctor Hajit. Yeah, I I I echo what he has just said. I think uh, information and knowledge is king. You can only make good decisions if you are able to glean out the exact condition and what it entails leaving it alone, going for a surgery, sitting back and waiting. It's all ab about the information that you get and process. So information is out there. If you Google, you can find everything about anything, but sometimes they come in bits and pieces. So you don't really know what is relevant and what is appropriate to your situation. So I think um, go to the middle order doctors, <laughs> ask them what's going on. Get a feel of uh, uh, what it actually is, and then and then make an informed decision. And I think you know that the I know we make it sound like a joke. You know, we're moving the surgeon up the list so that uh, you see them first. But it doesn't always mean that you are or that you have to go for surgery. It's like you said, it's um, having everything laid out on the table. Then you make your decision. Thank you so much. I've been speaking to consultant orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Hajit Singh, and Jimmy, a recent knee surgery patient. Uh, and do catch up with us in the next part when we discuss, uh, you know, what comes later on uh, in the physio and rehab process uh, after a knee injury. You've been listening to Health and Living on The Bigger Picture, BFM 89.9.